بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد This is our 20th lesson going through the poem القواعد الفقهية أوثل بعد الرحمن بن ناصر السعدي رحمه الله تعالى قال المصنف رحمه الله وكل ما نشا عن الماذون فذاك أمر ليس بالمضمون And so the author here رحمه الله he mentions another principle from the principles and from the maxims of fiqh and that is الضمان في الماذون به فما نشا عن ماذون فيه كان تابعا له and so this principle can be summarized by an example. The Sharia gives you permission to do things. Sharia gives you permission to do things. And so if you now do this thing and something comes out of it that requires compensation, it is not upon you to provide that compensation because you've done something the Sharia has given you permission to, to do. Let's give an example. You're praying the salah. Someone wants to walk in front of you whilst praying. What did the Messenger of Allah permit us to do when somebody walks in front of us whilst praying? And ندفعه That we stop him. That we stop him. And if he insists, that we fight him. And so now if a person comes walking in front of you, in the, in the, trying to walk in front of the place where you're praying, and you stick your hand out. And while sticking your hand out, he walks into your hand. Yeah, he walks into your hand and it harms him. So what's come out of it? What's come out of it is a need to laugh. He's, there's, there's a harm that's come out of it. Are you liable to compensate this individual for the harm you've caused him? No. Why? Because you've done something. You've done something that has been permitted for you. That is something that you have been permi- permitted to do. The Sharia permitted you to, if somebody walks in front of you whilst praying, that you stop them from doing it. By preventing them. And if they, desi- if they don't desist, then you... Uh, uh, you fight that individual i.e. you stop him with as much force that is required in order to stop this individual from walking in front of you whilst praying your salah طيب. so this is وَكُلُّ مَا نَشَعَ عَنِ الْمَاذُونِ فَذَاكَ أَمْرٌ لَيْسَ بِالْمَضْمُونِ and so if the sharia permits something for you to do and you do it and from that action something may come out of it that has caused harm then you are not liable to compensate that individual for the harm that you have caused him why? because you have done something the sharia has permitted you to, to do that's for the al-idhnu al-shara'i. It's also al-idhn al-urfi, which is a permission that's been given to you by someone else from the creation. For example, a man comes and says to you, take my car, you can drive it. Take my car, you can drive it. If they meet two conditions, if you meet two conditions, and a problem comes out of that car from your driving of it, but you've met these two conditions, no compensation is upon you. مثلا, you're driving the car, You've been given the keys to the car. The brother gives you the keys to the car and you drive the car. And, مثلا, you, يعني, the car, something happens to the engine or something happens to the, to the tire or something happens to the, uh, يعني, to the to maybe the engine overheats or something. But you, and it's not your fault. But it happened in your presence. So the itlath occurred in your, in your presence when you, when you had the car. If there are two conditions met, then you don't have to pay compensation to the owner of that car for the problem that has come out of that car. The two conditions, the first condition is that the one who's given you the car, is, it belongs to him. The item, the product belongs to him. The car belongs to him. It's, his, it's in his ownership. It's his car. And number two, he's given it to somebody who has met the conditions or who is known or somebody who has the ability to drive that car. The person who has the ability to drive that car. That the individual has the authority, he has the ability, he, ha- he has the, the required qualifications to uh, act or to uh, work with that product. طيب. He has the ability. So for example, he has the license to drive a car. He's passed his exams to drive the car. He's got يعني, the MOT and so on and so forth. Everything is legal. And he's met all of the requirements that are required for the person to drive the, the car, the, the requirements set by the state. طيب. So if you meet these two conditions and something happens to that car, لا ضمان عليك. There is no compensation that you have to give to that owner. However, if a person who doesn't own that product gives you the keys and tells you to drive the car, then you are liable to compensation if something happens to that car. Why? Because he's given you something that does not belong to him. Likewise, if he gives you the car to drive and you do not meet the requirements, you are not أهل. You are not worthy of driving that car. You have not met the requirements in order to drive that car. Or in order to be able to drive that car. 
then if something happens to the qadha, the man is upon you. The compensation is upon you. That's what this principle is trying to outline. And it, and it, and it, and it enters upon many chapters in fiqh. Many, many chapters in fiqh. Even in Bab al-Nikah, Bab al-Talaq, Bab al-Hadd, Qat' al-Sariq, Qat' al sariq it enters upon that. There are issues concerning that. There are many issues in which this qa'ida uh, enters into. So it's a very important principle that a person understands. And now, كُلَّمَا نَشَعَ عَنِ الْمَاذُونِ فَذَاكَ أَمْرٌ لَيْسَ بِالْمَضْمُونِ الله تعالى أعلم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته